the APUs, auxiliary power units in the shuttle. How do we test it? You can't do it in a 25 second free fall. So we have to take the entire boiler, boiling water, into steam, turn it upside down with the heat on top, and make sure the water boils and the steam before it comes out. It's a penalty test. It's negative gravity. Well, with negative gravity, if we can pass the test at negative gravity, we know somewhere between one gravity and negative gravity, zero gravity will work. So we had to we had to make sure we can prove more. How are we doing in time? We get going there. Ah, okay, whatever. You having fun? You having fun? Good. Okay, hey. Uh, speaking of showers, this here is on the Russian mirror. Two cosmos taking a shower in space. I'll get out of your way, ladies. Okay. However. <laughs> They built a clone of our shower in the Skylab. We built this uh, shower for the Skylab back in 1970. We actually have, there's a part of the system over here to remove the water from the shower. Okay, that's another thing. Anyway, the Russians built this. However, basically, we, uh, you notice there are two flashlights uh, on, a, on a shoe pocket on the, on the bulkhead here. They, they're, they're very simple in space, the Russians. They're hard, we reverse engineered a lot of the Russian hardware. We even reverse engineered the Russian Ariane suit. Uh, at Hamilton over in Connecticut. We had some 40 U.S. astronauts get involved with that program. So it was an amazing program. Anyway, they do a lot of things very straightforward but, and unique, but they were very robust. Their, their hardware survived mainly because it was robust. Okay, this here is a shower. Okay, it had, it was portable, a manhole cover up here, a manhole cover down here. And basically between it was a, a shower curtain with, vel with uh, vel uh, Velcro, okay? Guess what? It took eight hours for two cosmos to take a shower. <laughs> By the time they set up the equipment, heated the water, and then took the shower, cleaned the equipment back up, and went back out, it was it was eight hours. So they threw this away, and they physically then went back to what they call the uh, the um, uh, sponge bath technique. What I mean by that is you take a little. So these are hospital cloths, and you take water, and water in space does wick quite well. Pour it in, it stays in the in the cloth. And you do the old sponge bath technique, which you've done before shower days, right? So that's, uh, they still use that. Shannon Lucid was on board the Russian Mirror for how long? Six months. Remember her? She was basically, she I had an hour and a half interview with her once. Very neat interview. She came back, and she was 53, 54 years old. Her bone density went up a little bit. And I'm a nuts and bolts engineer. I don't know why, but... Maybe she was part menopausal or on estrogen or something like that. I don't know for sure. But she broke the, core, the curve for most of the astronauts. Plus, she had to live up there for six months with two Russians, Yuri 1, Yuri 2, <laughs> with zero privacy. There was a commode up there. Some of the, the, the longer the Russians flew, the more their commodes became like ours. Anyway, what they did is, here was the commode was in the hallway. And hello, Yuri, hello, Yuri, when she was sitting on the commode. It was very, anyway, she got off, she got off, the women, what I'm trying to say is some cases survive better in space than the men because she got off the shuttle after they took her from the mirror. She walked off the shuttle. The previous astronauts were on board the mirror that came back from the shuttle. They had to be carried off with stretchers or laid with one down. She, she survived quite well. And in fact, a couple days she was doing light jogging. So anyway. Okay, that's the uh, that's some of the life support stuff. Other things happen in your body. You have a fluid shift. As soon as you get into space, basically all the fluid kind of rushes to your head. Any gymnasts here? You you stand, go home tonight, stand in your head. You stand in your head, you can feel pressure in your head. That's the fluid shifting to your head. You take away gravity, that same effect that happens. Now, if you're dumb enough to stand on your head for three days. The body will say something's wrong and put the fluid back where it should be. So you do activate the space in that, re in that response. However, again, coming back from space, now you start to accept gravity. Now your fluid starts to go to the bottom of your, of your torso, your lower torso and your legs. So just before the astronauts come in, one of the countermeasures is to physically, uh, physically drink a lot of water before they come back in. Okay. Let's go, uh, ha. how about this one? You want to go, uh, how do the astronauts go to the bathroom? Oh, gee. Is that, is that bad? Okay. We'll talk. Anybody got an idea on that one? 
Not really? Anyway, NASA gave us a requirement to be able to take care of these problems. We could not question the space. We had to be co-ed. And guess what? You will not hear that sound in space. Right? There is no water in the commode. We use natural biodegradation. We do is we collect the urine separate from the solids. Okay, the urine, basically if you collect the urine separate, you can get roughly three pounds of water per day on long mission flights. Ain't that neat? Okay, now I got an invention for you. You gotta make an item that will go on the end of your faucet for something less than a million dollars that will tell you if you got E. coli in the water. Would that be neat? All I'm trying to say, there are spin-offs from NASA that basically, they, in NASA they cost a lot of money. But for the real world, if you can make it cheap and put it out there, uh, you can make, maybe it's your, that's your idea. There is a NASA spin-offs on the internet to be able to give you some clues. They're required. One of our contracts with Rockwell, we were required every month to identify possible spin-offs in our designs, in our equipment, that the public could use because it's all publicly funded. Okay, Dr. Flush. Uh, let's go back in history. Do they have a bathroom on the Apollo? No? That, oh, well, wait a minute now. We had a little bit. Okay. Here you are. Here you go. When they went, these guys went to the moon. Three guys. One, two, three guys. You three guys go on the moon. You are real. Oh, you want to go too? Only three. There, you were real heroes. There was no bathroom. How good is your training? Anyway, basically, NASA was nice to you guys. They gave you a whole bunch of what they call pee and poo pouches. This is a pee pouch, and this is a poo pouch, and don't get the two confused, because the wrong pouch will not work in the right place. Get the drift? Okay. Also, uh, I'm an engineer. I can only do one thing at a time. You're going to make that nanosecond decision, number one or number two, first or second. <laughs> See how complicated it gets? So here you are, go on the moon at 25,000 miles an hour, which is roughly six miles per second, and you want to use the commode, okay? So what you do is you say, excuse me, excuse me, you lift off the seat, no instructions necessary, you take the poop pouch, open it up, and there it is, voila. Okay, you take this little sticky, sticky piece of paper off here, and guess where you paste it? <laughs> now, you go home tonight, <laughs> You go home tonight and sit down and think about this. <laughs> you take away that pleasant thing called gravity, and what's one of the problems? Remember the word sticky. <laughs> Your body waste tends to stay with you in space, liquid and solids. So you become real good buddies. I can't see back here. Okay? Now, where does the smell go? The, ge the genie gets out of the bag. <laughs> you can't go over and turn on the bathroom fan and wipe out the neighbor's space aliens because you've got precious 100% oxygen inside the cabin. Okay, when they came back to the moon, they kind of had a grin and bear it. And when they came back from the moon, they wanted a sit-down toilet. I think you would too, okay? Uh, yeah, it's very, very similar. We had a lot of the... We had to do a lot of work with, if you're a nurse or something, we had to do a lot of work with the medical people on these things, too. And it's, uh, it does work. Okay. How close are we to 12? We are yeah. 12. Okay. We'll tell you what. Uh, eight more minutes? Huh? We'll tell you, give you eight more minutes. Okay, yes. Um, and in fact, I'll stick around if anyone wants to come up and wait for the hamburgers to get done or something like that. I'll be right here. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so anyway, let me show you. This here is it. If you don't do your job right, that's what you're, the SDS-35, <laughs> they had a backup for the septic system, okay? And it was because of other situations, but anyway, seven astronauts are running off the uh, shuttle to the nearest uh, outhouse, okay? That's it. There's a lot of public, they will worry about more than this than they worry about the suit sometimes, okay? Furthermore, if you're into a little uh, levity here, if you remember... <laughs> I grew up in a farm in Wisconsin because he had the moon on the side of the outhouse.